So, before we get going on this, um, when you just have a look at this, forget about the square root for a moment, are you confident to draw this? Yes. Yes, okay, so the first thing we're gonna need to do in order to work out what the square root of this looks like is we need to really understand what this looks like and we actually have to have a pretty decent graph of this before we work out the, what the graph of the square root looks like. In fact, basically, my good graph of this will be my primary tool for how to graph the square root, okay? Now, you need actually something that's a little bit better than a normal graph. Like if I just told you, graph f of x, full stop, um, what kinds of features do you think are important? I might actually note some of them down. Um, okay, so you're gonna have to look for asymptotes and you can already see one right there, yeah. okay? Um, what else would you think is important? Um, x and y. Mm -hmm. Um, if we were being very particular, which in this case, uh, it's not too relevant because I know what kind of graph this is going to look like. I might ask for turning points and things like that. But for now, I think this is probably enough, right? Now, usually, like, once you've got these two, done, okay? And you'd put them on uh, and you'd be fine. But because what we're asking for is the square root, I need to know a little bit more. For example, an intercept, right? That basically means when x equals zero, you get your y-intercepts. And when y equals zero, you get your x-intercepts. But in addition to that, to accurately know the shape of the square root of this thing, we also need to know where is the graph um, equal to one. Now, that's like a weird thing, right? This is like, where is the graph equal to zero, right? Why would you think it might be important to know where the graph is equal to one in relation to the square root, have a think. Um, because the two graphs would intersect. Very good, so the square root of one is just one. And obviously, if you take a number, like say, suppose I gave you something like, all right, I found some other spot, um, you know, this graph is gonna go up to really high values. So if f x equal to four, then you know that the square root of that is just going to be two, right? In other words, when you take the square root of a number that's bigger than one, you get smaller. But if I found another place for you and I said, actually, it's closer to the axis, it was something like a quarter. Think about this for a second. Now, when you take the square root, what happens to this? Um, it gets bigger. Yeah, which is a bit counterintuitive, right? We're so used to square roots being smaller than the number, but actually, underneath one, when you take a square root, you get bigger. And so you can see, I need to know exactly where this goes. I need to know when it's equal to one, when it's above one, and when it's below one, because the square root will interact differently with those things. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, why don't we try? What I would recommend is, um, we're gonna draw this thing first. We need to draw a good graph of it. I would encourage you to draw it no smaller than a third of a page. Now, I know that is considerably larger than what you've got there. Um, and the reason why is because of this stuff that I'm looking for, right? Uh, if you have a think about it, uh, I'm gonna draw mine comically large up here. Uh, this is a lot bigger than a third of a page. But what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna end up having Basically two graphs on here. I mean one of them we're gonna end up like if you've got pencil there You can rub it out, but as we construct this is it's gonna be very busy. There's gonna be a lot on there. Okay So do you have a fresh piece of paper there? Have you got a ruler? Yes. Okay, so let's draw ourselves up a nice big set of axes and let's start to chip away at this thing uh, Let's do it in the order that you suggested so Let's look for asymptotes first, because they're generally pretty easy to identify. What's the first asymptote you can see? Um, vertical asymptote Okay, fantastic. So, I'm going to, um, that's exactly right, but I'm going to try and encourage you to be a little more um, specific with your language. It's x equals 2 that gives you that vertical asymptote. And of course it is, but you're, you're going to have other asymptotes, right, that have equations. So let's actually state the equation. x equals 2, vertical line, so let's go ahead and put that in. I'm going to eyeball that like so, and then I label. Um, is there another asymptote you can tell me about? Um, y equals two. Okay, so there's a horizontal asymptote, and it comes from here. Can you just unpack for me, how did you know that there was gonna be a, um, a horizontal one as well as a vertical one? Uh, because the formula. <laughs> tell me what the formula is, explain that to me. A over x minus h plus either k or c. Uh, wait, sorry, uh, H. H. 
and then you've got like a plus whatever on the end. Yeah, minus H. Yeah, uh, minus H. It doesn't actually, I mean, it doesn't matter, does yeah. it? But it's just a constant, but I get the idea. Um, do you want that to be a plus or a minus? A plus. Sure, some constant, okay. So this is, I guess we could call this, this is a general form, right? You know it's gonna give you a hyperbola of some kind, and then it's gonna be vertically shifted, okay? So that's totally fine, um, I'm okay with that. I mean, you do get the right result, which like you said, it's y equals two. So I'm gonna try my best to have like a decent, your, your horizontal and vertical scales don't have to match with each other. They do have to match with themselves. Like if I say that's two, then this has to be negative two. The vertical scale can actually be different. However, it actually just makes it easier for you if they're pretty close, okay? I mean, sometimes you get ridiculous graphs that gives you, give you funny numbers that you're like, I have to make them different. But in this case, you're fine, okay? So we've got y equals two. And that's two right there. Now, the only reason why I was just pausing, Doris, on how you knew where the asymptote was is um, not everything is going to fit into a generalized formula, right? You can encounter lots of different equations out there. For example, um, I could give you a graph like this. Now, I'm deliberately choosing this because there is not a generalized formula for it. But I reckon you could make some pretty good guesses about what it looks like and the fact that it's actually gonna have some asymptotic behavior, um, even though it doesn't look anything like this, right? Because I think you know what sine looks like. Could you trace it with your hand for me? It's like, yep, okay, so it's this wave that goes up and down. When you divide by x, as x gets very large, positive, or very large, negative, you get a really massive denominator, which means the whole thing is gonna approach what? Um, zero. Yeah, that's right, if our denominator is like, a thousand, a million, you know that sine x only stays between one and negative one. So it's like, okay, this is a, of a moderate size. This thing's just gonna get huge. So in fact, what you get is this, uh, sine, right? Okay, so it's gonna look something like that. And then it's also gonna have this on the other side. Now, you might say, Mr. that doesn't look like an asymptote to me, because it like crosses it lots and lots of times, right? Um, some asymptotes can be crossed and some can't. Do you know which is which? If you don't, it's okay, I will tell you, but no, not sure? No. Yeah, that's okay. So, vertical asymptotes, when we're talking about like normal functions and that kind of thing, vertical asymptotes can't be crossed because they come from discontinuities. See how you, you literally can't put two in there and it just like explodes. You're like, oh, can't divide by zero, yeah? However, and this is where the formula helps, but doesn't tell the whole story. Um, Horizontal asymptotes don't have anything to do with discontinuities, right? In fact, I guess this one, I should have put like, this has a, a vertical one here. So it's gonna, hold on, X is gonna be positive. So it's gonna actually skyrocket here. And this one's gonna like go down, okay? Um, what's really going on is, you told me about how if this gets big positive or big negative. It's really just about the extremities of the graph, which is why in the middle, you can cross as many times as you like. It's actually completely irrelevant. And you've already seen this. I actually saw on your page, right? Um, if you had a graph that looked, I don't know, something like this, right? I don't know, weirdo thing like this, um, maybe like that, and then like that. You've seen things like this before, right? Now, this clearly has a horizontal asymptote, right? But in the middle of the graph, these guys don't care about the horizontal asymptote. It's only at the extremities, at the extreme ends, okay? So the way I would, going back to your formula, the reason why the formula works is because as x gets very, very large, tell me what happens to this. Um, it gets small. Yeah. It gets small because you got a constant and a constant. Maybe you've got two and two. And as X gets to values like a thousand and a million, those twos as if they're not even there, right? They're so unimportant. So you get two over a million. Well, it's it, the answer, the word we would use that is it's trivial. It's like it's, it's like it's zero, okay? So because it's like zero, that's why you only end up with this thing. And that's why this is the horizontal asymptote you get, okay? So it's just important you know, like formulas in general forms, they're very helpful, but you should dig a little bit to know well, why do they work. Okay, from here, um, we've got our asymptotes, intercepts. You can help me out. Uh, the x-intercept, I mean the y-intercept is four, I don't know, three. <laughs> <laughs> yep, so, uh, oh, 
Hold on, hold on. Well, let's let's write this out, shall we? So you were just working out the y-intercept. So x equals zero is going to give oh, you. Let, let's let's put it in, shall we? So f of zero is equal to two over zero minus two plus two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Two over negative two plus two. What's this? Negative one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, plus two. <laughs> yeah. No, relax. This is a thing which happens all the time, it's because, like, I don't feel bad, right? Um, your brain is concentrating on so many different things that even though you're like, you looked at this and you laughed because you're like, oh, of course, right? It's not like you don't know how to do this, but your working memory got overloaded. Happens all the time. What it does mean is, like, there's a way to overcome this. Um, when you hate making silly mistakes for yourself, well, just do what I did, just write it out. Right? Don't worry about doing it in your head, you don't need to. Um, some people tell me, some students tell me, I don't want to write it because it takes a really long time. You know what else takes a really long time? Fixing a mistake that you don't know where it is. So I think it saves you time. All right, so I've got one. Uh, that's right there. And we already knew before, that's kind of convenient. It's almost like the question was designed to do this. Those parts are important. So let's just keep that in mind. Uh, can you help me work out a, that was a y-intercept, an x-intercept now, y equals zero. <laughs> yes, good. Yeah. You're, you're learning the lesson. Fantastic. Um, I'll give you a moment to do that. It's not hard. Um, so what have we got here? Zero equals... Um, is it just one? It does look like that, doesn't it? Because I, I'm going to subtract two from both sides. I can then divide by two. Yep. Um, then what have I got here? I've got... Ooh, I've got to be careful. That's that. Is that right? Yay! Yeah. That look good? Which matches, by the way, you're like, oh, I'm expecting, because you've seen hyperbola before, uh, it's not a complicated one, so you're expecting like this kind of thing happening, right? Okay, now this is actually very good because, um, because it's not too complicated, you can kind of draw what's going on here, right? So you can sort of say, oh, I know I'm going to head down towards there, and this is going to head off to that asymptote, and you're going to get something sort of in reverse over here. So far, so good? Now it's worth noting just before I move on, if I hadn't have given you such a simple one, if I'd put more stuff in there, if I'd put like an x squared, or if I had more things, sometimes it wiggles around, sometimes, see how we're like coming from underneath the asymptote? Weird ones will come over the asymptote and then approach from the top. Um, if you want on another occasion or for a different problem, I can give you an example of that. But the point of this problem, like they've intentionally made this simple because they really want you to focus on this square root thing and what's going on there, okay? So just, I just want you to file, just because you're coming from the bottom doesn't mean you always end up on the bottom. There's ways to work out where you end up. Okay, now we're gonna do the square root part. This, this is y equals f of x. So now what I want is y equals the square root of that, okay? Now, um, this part is slightly laborious, um, but once you get the hang of it, you're like, oh, I can do this instinctively, but I'm gonna do it super slow to begin with, okay? Mm -hmm. 